Hi, my name is Gwen. I'm a dietitian from Goodall Hospital. Um, I do mostly outpatient services at Goodall. Um, I'm also a diabetes educator, and I'm here today to do a little presentation on diabetes called Myths or Facts. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the presentation. If anybody has any questions during it, feel free to ask questions. And then at the end, this is pretty quick, so at the end, we will have time for some, um, for some questions, okay? Um, I did bring a few things with me today. I have some brochures on our classes that we do offer. They're offered on a monthly um, basis. We have a schedule here as well. And um, so again, if, you, if anybody's interested in more information at the end, you're more than welcome to come up and take some information. I also have a few business cards. Um, and again, if you have a question that you just want to um, ask one-on-one -on -one afterwards, that, that should be fine as well. So, um, diabetes, myths and facts. First thing we're going to do is just talk about what is a myth. A myth is something presented as fact, but it hasn't been proven to be true. So, commonly held myth years ago, the earth was thought to be flat, we know that it's round. But again, that was the, that was the understanding. Why is it important to know if something is a myth? If we're trying to control diabetes, but we're basing some of our decisions on misinformation, then we're not likely to have as good control as we might if we have accurate information. So we might actually be limiting our choices more than we need to. I find a lot of people, they come in and uh, they're eating absolutely no carbs. Okay, That's not the way to control diabetes, um, but their, their thinking is, is that it is. So, uh, if you guys can all contribute to this. I'm going to make a statement, and then you guys decide whether it's a myth or a fact. Eating too much sugar causes diabetes. Myth or fact? I heard all myths. Guys are smart. <laughs> myth. What we eat does not cause diabetes. However, if we're prone to get diabetes, Eating right, losing weight if we're overweight, and exercising may help you postpone getting a diagnosis earlier on in life. Okay? So how do we know if we're prone to diabetes? If you have a family history of diabetes, you're much more likely, you're 50% more likely to develop diabetes than someone who has no history of it. So that's a good uh, red flag to say, okay, I need to take care of myself. If you already have diabetes, eating right and losing weight, if you're overweight, and exercising should help control the blood sugars. Myth or fact? If a person with diabetes feels okay, they are okay. Myth. A person with diabetes doesn't necessarily, necessarily feel any different than someone who doesn't have diabetes. And this is this is kind of a two-edged sword. It's a good thing in my thinking. Sometimes it's hard to convince somebody who feels like they always have that uh, they have to take different care of themselves. Why might a person not feel any different? They may have diabetes, but the sugars aren't super high. Or they may have had it for quite some time, and they've adjusted. Our bodies are very flexible. And I've had people come in and they test out at 400, 450. I feel just fine. Well, that's because they think they do until they get it under control. And then they start to get some energy back. Oh my gosh, I didn't know how crappy I felt. So you really have to um, go by the sugars. You, you, you either have it or you don't have it. Myth or fact? People with diabetes can't eat potatoes, corn, peas, rice, spaghetti, or bread. Myth. Again, it is a myth. I get a lot of people who think that they can't. I know, I can't eat potatoes. Um, all the foods listed are allowed. They're carbohydrates, and they turn to sugar. Sugar is an essential fuel for the body, so they need to be eaten. But they need to be eaten in controlled amounts at meals and snacks. So it's not all, all that you want whenever you want it. A carbohydrate-controlled meal plan is recommended. <clears throat> Myth or fact, it doesn't matter how much carbohydrate I eat at a meal, or even if I skip a meal, 
as long as I don't eat more carbohydrates in a day than I am allowed. Yes, one person said, me. So it is a myth. It does matter how much we eat at a meal. If we eat too little carbohydrate, our sugars could be too low. If we eat too much, our blood sugars could be higher than recommended. We should eat controlled amounts throughout the day, not all at once. If we put it all into the tank at once, what's going to happen to our sugars? If carbohydrates turn to sugar, what's going to happen to the sugars? They've got to be too high. If we decide to skip a meal because our blood sugars have been running too high, what's likely to happen to our blood sugars in between? We go for a long period of time without eating. They're going to drop, they're going to crash. So you don't want to do that. Another fact, I don't have full-blown diabetes if I'm not on insulin. Yeah. Yeah. That should be the smarter, just good guesser. <laughs> it's a myth. And I hear this all the time. When I teach classes, people say, I don't really know why I'm here. I don't really have diabetes because I'm not on insulin like my grandmother is. <laughs> well, it's not by what medication you're on or not on. Some people are very well controlled with just diet and exercise, and that's a good thing. Insulin is just another type of medication that is sometimes used to help gain better control of a person's blood sugars. Being on insulin doesn't mean that a person is worse off than someone else. It just means that it may be a more effective way of managing their diabetes. So a lot of people just have a preconceived idea about what being on insulin is all about. And it doesn't mean that they're any worse off than anybody else. They just may need that in order to get control, better control of their blood sugars. Myth or fact, as a person gets older, they are more likely to develop diabetes. It is a fact. I thought by throwing in a fact, I might <laughs> stop somebody. <coughs> There are several factors that a person cannot change that makes them at higher risk for developing diabetes, including age, race, gender, and family history. We all want to get older because the alternative isn't pretty, right? We're not getting older. We're not around. <laughs> race. Um, so look, I'll go back to age first. As you get older, your risk for type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and stroke goes up. More than 8 in 10 Americans age 65 and older die from heart attacks. There's nothing you can do about getting older, but you can take steps to eat healthy, stay active, and manage your weight. And you should also talk to your doctor about cholesterol, blood pressure, and the blood sugars. Make sure your numbers are where they should be, and if you're not, work with your doctor to set target numbers that are right for you. Grace. People of different racial and ethnic groups are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. African Americans, Mexican Americans, American Indians, Native Hawaiians, Pacific Islanders, and Asian Americans have a higher risk for these deadly diseases. And this is partly because these populations are more likely to be overweight, have high blood pressure, and again, have type 2 diabetes. And those all go hand in hand. Gender, whether you're male or female, also affects how likely you are to develop heart disease. Men are more likely to develop heart disease, but once a woman reaches menopause, her risk for heart disease goes up. Even then, women still aren't as likely as men to develop heart disease. However, once you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, your risk for all of those things goes up. Heart disease, stroke, um, vision problems, you name it. Family history. If your mother, father, sister, or brother has heart disease or diabetes, again, your risk goes up. If you don't know your family history, ask. That's an important piece of information, and if you can obtain that, that, that again, it's, it's important because you're 50% more likely to develop diabetes if you have a family history of it. And um, in this case, you don't go by what I don't know isn't going to hurt me. Uh, you just, you know, you want to know so that you can take some preventative steps. 
Myth or fact, my doctor is in charge of managing my diabetes. If he doesn't tell me I have to do something, then I don't have to. Yeah, I want you guys all to come to my classes because you guys already know all of this stuff. I struggle with this one all the time. I usually give out um, meters to new patients or patients that have had diabetes but have never tested themselves. My doctor didn't tell me I had to do that. Well, that's all well and good, but your doctor's telling you to change something. And how likely are you, be able, are you to know whether or not the changes you're making are affecting your blood sugars if you don't know what your blood sugars are? So again, um, and that's just one example. So a lot of times the doctor doesn't necessarily say anything other than you have diabetes and I want you to go here because they're gonna teach you how to take care of it. So, and some doctors do a more thorough job and they do expect to um, help you with goals and stuff like that, but not necessarily. So you're in charge of your diabetes. Your doctor can help keep track of where you are with your diabetes, <coughs> but he can't take control, you have to. Learn how to take care of yourself and use the many resources available to help you doctor, dietitian, nurse, pharmacist, diabetes educator. Myth of fact, even though I can eat carbohydrates, there are some choices that are better than others. Fact, whole grain and complex carbohydrates are better choices than processed simple carbohydrates because they offer more nutrition and they may result in a lower, slower rise in blood sugar. So you'll notice I just listed a few examples, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, brown rice. Does anybody know the difference between wheat bread and whole wheat bread? Or the difference between wheat bread and white bread? Processing. Processing, which one's processed? The wheat. The white bread and the wheat bread that doesn't say 100% whole wheat. So wheat bre white bread is made from wheat. They process the heck out of it. They strip everything out of it, including the nutrition. They bleach it. They try to add as much of the nutrition back as they can. That's white bread. Then they add caramel coloring to it and call it wheat bread. So you're paying a little bit more for a little bit of caramel coloring. So you always want to look for 100% whole wheat or 100% whole grain. The difference in that is now you've got the grain, it's in the whole, it, it's, it's got the whole grain intact. It hasn't been broken down. The body actually has to do some work to break it down. And it's going to offer more nutrition and more fiber. Myth or fact, I shouldn't eat carrots because they'll make my blood sugars go too high. I really wish you guys were in my classes because I get this all the time. I can't eat carrots because they're on, they're high on the glycemic index. Has anybody heard that? That they're high on the glycemic index? They are. For some reason, they're higher on the glycemic index than ice cream. The take home message is not go home and eat ice cream instead of carrots though. <laughs> the glycemic index is based on a large quantity of something eaten and um, how quickly the blood sugar rises as a result of it. Now, I don't know what quantity of carrots they use, but I can tell you it had to have been a large quantity. Now, most of us are not going to eat our weight in carrots, but most of us could eat at least part of our weight, <laughs> me included, in ice cream. So, and ice cream is going to have a huge effect on your blood sugar levels and also on the weight. So, carrots are actually low in carbohydrates and they're used as a free food. They're a great source of vitamin A, and when eaten raw, can offer some satisfying crunch to a meal or a snack. And I'd much rather see you guys eating these than a lot of ice cream. Myth or fact, I can't eat sugar because I have diabetes. Can eat anything with sugar. Anybody here who has diabetes, who looks at the grams of sugar on the label, To control blood sugars, all sources of carbohydrates are limited. Small amounts of sweets may be worked into the diet on occasion. So 
it's pretty obvious that candy, um, cakes, pies, they're going to be higher in carbohydrates and higher in simple sugars. Um, but who am I to tell anyone that they're not going to be able to eat a small amount of those on occasion? Um, and some people do really well at working those things into their diet, um, as opposed to thinking that they absolutely have to avoid them forever. And it's not going to happen anyway. That's not reality. Myth or fact, I don't take diabetes medicine, so my diabetes must not be serious. It is a myth. Not everyone who has diabetes takes diabetes medicine. If the body produces some insulin, weight loss, healthy eating habits, and regular physical activity can help insulin work more effectively. However, diabetes does change over time, and diabetes medicine may be needed later. That's an important piece, because I think a lot of times, especially when we do a really good job of controlling our blood sugars through just diet and exercise, that's great, okay? Um, the less medicine we need to use to control the blood sugars for the, uh, as long a period of time as possible, the better off we are. Why? Well, if we can do it ourselves, why depend on medicine, first off? Second of all, I think it gives you a false sense of security if you're just depending on the medicine. And I can tell you right now, if you're not doing anything about diet and exercise and you're just taking medications and your medication is controlling your diabetes, and I have a lot of people who come in thinking that's what's happening, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a gushing wound. It might take care of it for a little while. It's not going to work long term and you're going to end up on lots of medicines probably insulin, uh, because medicine has a life expectancy. Uh, most diabetes medications might work for four or five years, and then you're on to another, um, another medication. So, and we're seeing people younger and younger being diagnosed with diabetes. So if we have 20, 30, 40 year olds on a whole host of medications, like, it's likely that as they get older, they're going to be on the insulins and stuff. You can be doing everything that you've been asked to do, however, and it may just be that the disease is progressing, and so then you do need a little bit of help, and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, it's a good opportunity to kind of look and make sure that you're really doing everything you're supposed to, and then it's okay to go back to the doctor and say, giving it my all, if we need to do something, then you need to, you know, look at medication. That's it. Any questions? Yeah. Every year, um, we're supposed to have a physical. And I was just wondering, what type of tests do they do to find out if you do have diabetes? Usually it's um, just a blood um, glucose test so that when they, they usually do some kind of lab test where they have to take some um, blood samples anyway. Um, and usually by the age of 40, they're automatically doing it. I would imagine that they're probably doing it at younger and younger ages all the time. Um, a diagnosis of diabetes with a fasting blood sugar, so that means that you haven't eaten for at least 12 hours, you, um, you go in, you get the uh, test done. If you have a blood sugar of 126 or higher, that's, um, that's indicative of diabetes. And the American Diabetes Association wants you to have in Medicare guidelines, and Medicare is the standard for all insurances, so Medicare guidelines say you have to have two fastings above 125. So 126 or higher. That is um, a diagnosis. There's all kinds of ways we can diagnose now. I don't remember what the A1C number is. I want to say it's above 6.2. Um, but the A1C is an average of what your blood sugar has been over the last two to three months. Up until the last year and a half or so, that was not an acceptable diagnosis. We did not diagnose based on A1Cs. It is an acceptable um, number to use for a, the diagnosis of diabetes. And I believe it's 6.2, but I, I'm not 100% sure of that. 
Somebody who falls in the range between 101 and 125, they're what we call pre-diabetic. In other words, we know left unchecked, you make no changes at all, you're going to be diagnosed with diabetes. And it may be a few months down the road, it might even be a couple of years down the road. That's the time to really take hold and make some changes because those numbers we can change back. I've actually had people in my office before who said, I used to have diabetes, but I don't anymore. Or I had diabetes, I got rid of it, and now it's back again. Once you have diabetes, it's there. It's kind of like um, years ago, especially like with leukemia and stuff, they used to not be able to cure leukemia, but they used to be able to put it in um, oh, remission. And when a person has really good control of their blood sugar numbers, that's kind of the analogy I like to use, is that you, the diabetes is still there. Go back to your old eating habits, eat what you want, stop exercising, those numbers are gonna come right back up. But it's kind of like it's in remission because you're holding it back. You're doing a good job with throwing everything at it you have. But it never goes away, okay? With the exception, and I'm sure somebody's gonna raise their hand so I'll address it right now, lap band surgeries, you probably, most of you have heard um, about the either lap band or the gastric bypass, and they're now saying that that's a way to get rid of diabetes. Um, Again, I don't know that I really agree with that. Uh, the reason I say it is, is because yes, their numbers go back to normal if they lose a lot of weight. Nine times out of 10, they do. But if they go back to their old eating habits and they start to gain weight again, what do you think happens? The numbers go back up. So, you know, did they really get rid of the diabetes? <coughs> I, I would say not, but that's what they're saying, so. Who am I to argue with it, right? Any other questions? Just a comment. I was, I've been wondering about that because I've heard the same thing. That once you have diabetes, you always have it. But then you watch the programs like The Biggest Weight Loser, and the, the doctor comes on in the beginning, and you got diabetes, and they didn't even know it. And at the end of the program, they say, they just told me I no longer have diabetes. And so. again, I, and, and I agree, and I've heard that. And I, I, there's a particular doctor that comes to mind in the area that uses that phrasing with his patients. And I take issue with that because, again, the diabetes doesn't go anywhere. It's just that they've got such good control. They've lost a large amount of weight. They're exercising. They're taking care of themselves. But if one of those individuals falls off the wagon, so to speak, and they're interviewed you know, a year or so later, and they've gained back most of their weight or all of their weight, I'm willing to bet that the diabetes is back. So was it ever gone in the first place? No. And why do I take issue with the wording? Because again, I think it gives us a false sense of security. If somebody says, you don't have this anymore, usually you're gonna say, okay. You know, even if you don't verbalize it out loud, it's in the back of your mind. I don't have diabetes anymore. Oh, yes, you do. You just need to stay on top of it. Any other questions? <coughs> yep. Is the treatment different for adults and children? The, uh, the, the question was, is the treatment different for adults and children? Very much so. Um, a, a child who develops diabetes uh, develops type 1 diabetes. And what that means is, is that they're not producing any insulin at all. Now, we've all heard the term insulin, but um, a lot of us don't really have a clear picture of how it works. Insulin is the key that unlocks the door to the cells to get the sugar into the cells where it's supposed to be burned. If a person's not producing insulin, they're not going to live very long, okay? So before we knew what insulin was and what it did and what was going on with these people who were not producing insulin, they would die. We would stand by and watch them die and they could eat lots and lots of food but they just couldn't they, they weren't making use of it. So it's kind of like getting the fuel into the tank. And the fuel is the sugar, and the key is the insulin. And so um, any person who has type 1 diabetes, which is usually um, onset at childhood, they have to be taking insulin injections or they're on an insulin pump. Now, type 2 diabetes, which is what I was addressing today, 
you are producing some insulin, okay? Um, but the way the insulin is working isn't as good as it should. And there's a couple of things that are going on. You may not be producing as much insulin as you were at one time. And the other thing that's going on uh, more than likely is what we call insulin resistance. So it's like the key is there, but it's just not working as effectively as it once did. And a lot of times we can um, treat that insulin resistance not just with medications, but actually exercise is very effective. And sometimes I've seen it much more effective than any pill that I've seen taken. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And so there are people who have type 2 diabetes, though, that are on insulin. And it just might mean that that's what works for them. That doesn't mean that they've switched over, that they've changed to type 1 diabetes. We have type 2s who are on insulin. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. And like I said, I've got some flyers and some brochures up here if anybody's interested in grabbing them. Um, another thing as well is if you haven't signed